The wonders of life got the prettiest side for everyone to enjoy. Standing up close by the Christmas tree, glimmering light, I am right where I wanna be. I'll be home for a couple of days, wander around with you. You and me in the cold, thought it'd never be true. Wherever I go, I got you. Oh, I have stopped running, there is no way trying. You better loosen your belts. Drinking hot wine by the fire, don't care of anything else. It's Christmas. And welcome to a new episode of 25 Days of Christmas, an Advent podcast where we talk about a Christmas movie or special every day until December 25th. I'm Patricia and I'm here with my sister Carleen. Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about a movie that you found accidentally when we were doing our stuff on Netflix and that is Alien Xmas, which is an animated film that was released on 2020 done by the Kyoto Brothers. Now I was surprised when I saw the credits as soon as we were done watching the special because I know about the Kyoto Brothers' work. They've done stuff such as Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Ernest Scared Stupid, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and they even did the stop motion stuff for Elf. So I thought this will be really interesting to see what they do. So as mentioned earlier, Alien Xmas. So it's about an alien named X, and he's part of an alien group called the Kleps, and their planet had been pretty much degenerated into a lifeless planet so they have no other choice but to travel from galaxy to galaxy so that they can be able to steal things to survive and he was given a mission over by supreme leader z to go over to planet earth so that they, he can be able to steal all the resources and then come back he well more specifically the north pole yeah more specifically the north pole he heads over to the North Pole and sees that everything is just so abundant with toys and foods and other things. He starts stealing things at first, but then he starts becoming uh, friends with an elf by the name of Holly, who's, it's funny, her father's name is Obi, and we just realized, oh, Obi, that's the name of our cousin's dog. I just thought that, that was actually pretty cute. Holly is like really feeling lonely because her father's constantly busy trying to build a new sleigh for Santa that is jet fueled. And then X learns about giving and the true meaning of Christmas. And he shares it with all of the other Kleps when they land into the North Pole after he didn't return from getting all the stuff that needed to survive. So yeah, this is a fairly new Christmas short. It's in stop motion akin to like the Rankin Bass specials. And yeah, let's just give our thoughts of it. So what do we like about this special? Uh, I like the storyline. I like the concept. So he's part of, and it kind of reminds me of like the aliens from home a little bit, like the movie home, mm -hmm. but, you know, like they believe that, you know, like they're not wrong in taking things. Um, so he lands, like you're saying on planet earth and his objective, his mission is to take things to bring back. And in the process of that, he is gifted as a toy to a lonely girl. And at first he tries to pretend that role and he's noticing, like Patty's saying, through playing as a lifeless toy, um, how generous and kind these elves are with one another. And that starts to kind of like make him question like, oh wow, there's another way of living, another way of being. And as he moves along and sees kind of like the generosity of this little girl and how like selfless she is, it starts to warm him and make him realize that like the concept of taking is not what he wants to do. And so he pivots and changes uh, what he likes. So I like that storyline. I like that he's also what brings change to his Race? Uh, is that really like to his people? Yeah. Know, to his kind? To his alien kind? Yeah, the alien kind. Yeah, yeah, like how he brings change and he reminds people and then through him, like, these creatures are able to, like, shift their take, take, take mentality into one that's warmer and about giving and about, like, the true meaning of Christmas, you know? Yay! And, like, I, I like the fact that, like, the little aliens are kind of cute. And I like that the, they change colors when they're being more true to them themselves. They're not that gray, like, you know? Mm -hmm. I like the kind of symbolism behind that. 
I like the story of how this little girl, like the father and the family recognize that even in a place like the North Pole, where Christmas and giving and cheer and all of that is supposed to be top priority, like sometimes you lose sight of that and you have this elf who's working too much and spending too much time away from his family and his daughter is kind of suffering. And like, it reminds you of like, hey, what's really important is mm -hmm. quality time with family. And so there's a shift there. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of the dad character from Elf. Mm, yeah, so I like that part. I also like, like, I can't help, there's like um, a little bit of Lilo and Stitch. I get a little bit of a Lilo and Stitch kind of vibe and feel. Oh really, how so? Like an alien who comes, he has like Stitch, comes to earth with different motives and is gifted as a pet or gifted as a toy to a, a you know a human or an elf in the situation and through that relationship has a change of heart and it's something that spreads outside of him he's able to like impact kind of like the, the alien planet he was from the same here and it's like the ugly duckling like it almost feels like this alien was looking for a place to belong I yeah think, i think it, there's a similar theme where on his planet he's not as accepted because of his size. Yeah, he's the smallest of all the clips, which gave me Invader Zim vibes mm -hmm. because he's the smallest among the Irks. And I just thought um, that's a really interesting correlation because, you know, we have Zim and he was sent down to planet Earth to take over it and he has a robot companion. Mm -hmm. but, but I think that, like, Invader Zim has a dark undertone. Like, it does. Super dark, not yeah, kind it, of it. Yeah, is. yeah, it does have a super, uh, super, super dark undertone. Yeah, and also, like, I don't, it doesn't have like that heartfelt like change of heart that this story has. Yeah. I, I don't, for whatever reason, I, I see it a little more closely related to Lilo and Stitch. Oh yeah, for sure. And then a little bit like toward the end where you have that little sprinkle of the Grinch. It's like, and then his heart grew three sizes mm -hmm. that day instead of like uh, with Alien Xmas. It's like, and then he turned a different color when he was shown about the gift of giving. Yeah. I, you know, it's kind of wild because like, aliens and christmas you're like really are you kidding me i mean the old closest thing that i can think of is santa claus conquers the martians which i still think is a weird concept and even then that movie's terrible yeah but. and i've never seen it but i'm just like you almost want to go into this moving hating movie hating it because it's like are we kidding like aliens and christmas i, I mean i guess they didn't want to do the one millionth adaptation of a christmas carol but uh, you, I actually was surprised I didn't wind up hating it. It actually turned out to be a, an okay movie, and it's cute. And I don't think it was very long. It, it was, was only f 42 minutes long. Okay, yeah, it didn't feel very long. So it, it felt like good timing, good length, and it, it was a little more surprising. You know, it, it surprised me, I think. I, I, I wasn't expecting to like it. Yeah, I thought it was pretty okay, too. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to genuinely hate it. Because of aliens? Because I just thought, like, are we kid Like, what a weird, dumb concept. Um, and maybe that'll be too kitschy or, like, too much of a kid thing. Gotcha. But it actually, be, it actually wound up being kind of cute. The story is pretty nice. And it is very Christmassy. Yeah. And it's it's pretty it's a good movie. I would I would recommend this movie, especially for like if you have kids or for family. Yeah, so it's kind of enjoyable. like Yeah, so kind of like how we recommended Albert, uh, where it has yeah, like it has that kind of thing. Except it was a, in my opinion, it was a little more enjoyable than Albert. Okay. I liked it a little more. Okay. All right, well, speaking of which, uh, let's talk about, you know, in terms of watchability. Every year, every few years, or once and ever again. For me personally, I would not watch it every year. I don't think it climbed that high in, the, in my ratings. Um, and I would say every couple of years, you know, like, it's fine. Uh, maybe three, four or so more years, and I think that's okay. Yeah. I wouldn't watch it every year. Yeah, I'll probably, like, watch it maybe, like, once every couple of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially since this is a Netflix exclusive, and we're going to be watching, like, through all the other Christmas stuff that we've been doing throughout this month, then... I'll probably say, okay, if, if it's like popping up on my suggestions feed, then maybe I'll tune into it. Yeah, I think, you know what, to be honest with you, I would probably watch this movie again if I'm watching it with family or with, you know, like a partner or a friend or like it's been a number of years and I'm like, let me check this out again. But it's not something that I'm running to and it's not something that every two or three years I want to make sure to watch again. Yeah, I mean, especially not for me. Yeah, especially since you kind of found this one by accident. Yeah, and I just think that even though it surprised me and it's better than I thought it was going to be, it's still not enough. Like, 
it's not enough for me to like really add it to the roster. I just think that it, if it naturally like shows up again, kind of mm-hmm. like it did, yeah, I will watch it again. But it's not added to my top any list. All right, but yeah, let's rate this. I probably would give it like a one point eight. I'll give it a two. Yeah, like, and I, I'm. I hope one point. I know one point eight seems like a low score. I was expecting to give it a negative. So the fact that it's a, like, a negative one hundred. <laughs> I don't know about that, but definitely negative. But um, so the fact that it's rated at and it's one at one point eight out of five for an alien Xmas movie, like not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so that is it with our discussion of Alien Xmas. Let us know in the comments below about what you thought of this. If you have any uh, suggestions for any Christmas movies or specials that you want us to take a look into, please let us know. We're not going to be able to get through every single one of your suggestions, but we'll do our best. Let us, and also please, if you can, uh, share this video, like, comment, subscribe, and um, also tune in next time as we're going to be talking about another Christmas movie or special. So until then, see you later. Bye, guys. Gaze upon the sky Christmas on my mind Somewhere from a place up high above There's a song of love Travel